So Chris had agreed to put together my computer and when it was arriving, it arrived piecemeal. There's really nothing super stand out about it, although this one does have a solid state drive, which is exciting mostly because my computer now boots in seconds instead of minutes. And that's a really big perk. Or hours as it were when I <laughs> I needed a new computer pretty bad. I was going to be able to pay for it this month anyway. So that was why I went ahead and put it on credit. That and to milk my cash back card for extra money. But then I got the pieces over the course of the week. And I got everything put together. Well, Chris put it together for me. And then I was loading programs on it. And I had it almost ready. I was going to have a very fun, exciting Friday night of playing with my new toy. And then on Friday, my car made an executive decision to kill itself. So it had a cracked boot or something in the wheel. It's part of the powertrain. And it was making this awful noise, which was why I took it in. I went to mail Fancy Pants' birthday present, which I did take a picture of. It's a little bracelet I commissioned for. She should have it by now. So, I had my computer on credit, and then I had my car kind of something wrong with it. I didn't know what. I figured it was maybe a tire out of alignment really badly, or I might finally have to go get my struts fixed. But nope, it was a cracked boot. They said, so how much is that going to be? And they're like, well, that's like five or six hundred dollars. And I'm like, ugh. And it still has a cracked strut. Do you have the quote from that? So the total ended up being around twelve hundred. And that was just way too much for me to just pay for a machine that could break again in any other way at any time. At least hypothetically. So, I decided that rather than sinking what money I had into fixing this car, I would instead buy myself a newer machine. Newer being a very relative term. On Friday, after my car had broken down, Chris had plans to meet up with his daughter, so he had her pick, her, pick me up on her way through town. And I kind of hung out with them, but I tried not to be too obtrusive because I sort of understood that I was not the focus of the evening, even though I was in kind of a bad way. But Chris and also Amy helped me figure out what it was I needed in order to get a car, and they took me out to buy it. They didn't, you know, just kind of throw me out there and say, figure it out for yourself. So they took me out, they looked at cars with me. The first dealer that I spoke to actually had a very good car for me. And his name was Dennis Lunsford. I told him what I was looking for, I wanted good gas mileage. I like to travel on the weekends to go visit friends out of town. And I also have like a 30 to 40 minute commute. So I really want good gas mileage. In a perfect world, I would be buying a certified pre-owned vehicle, something very reliable, with low maintenance cost, but also I didn't want to pay more than $10,000, and I realized those two were kind of at odds with each other, but I kind of let him figure out what the compromise was going to be on that. And he took me almost straight to a 2008 Nissan Versa that is a very reliable car with good gas mileage and I was like wow and in my brain I'm thinking this seems like it would actually work really well for me I could buy this and probably be content but I have nothing to compare it to because you know when you find something that fits everything right at the start you don't have any way to contextualize it or know is this really as good as it seems or am I just that desperate right now? So I knew I had found a car that worked for me, but I didn't know if it was the car until I went to the other two dealerships. So the second dealership I went to and I described that, and the guy showed me a 
card that was very, very nice, and it was also around 18000 and I said, yeah, I don't need Bluetooth, or whatever this thing is. I don't even know what that is, and I don't need anything voice activated. I, I really just want something basic to get me to and from work and travel to go see friends. You know, the travel part, not the luxury part of it. I even said the words gas mileage. He should know what I'm thinking, right? <sighs> so then he showed me another car that was closer to what I was looking for, but again, it was too expensive. It was 15000 and I'm thinking to myself, well, I just saw one that was 10000 that had everything I wanted. He finally showed me a car that was around 12000 and that one, I think, if the other car had not existed, would have been the one that I got. But, again, it was a little too expensive, and it took him three tries to find the car that I would have bought based on the descriptions. I basically just kept saying, no, cheaper. <laughs> I said 10000 So, he was a little frustrated because he did spend time on me, but if he had taken me to what I was describing at the very beginning like the other guy did, he wouldn't have spent so much time on me. <sighs> and I didn't feel obliged to buy from him because he kind of got a little pissy when I was like, well, let me go see what else there might be. And he's just like, well, I, I've been a salesman all my life and I'm sometimes buy things I don't want, even though just because the salesman is good. And I'm thinking to myself, hmm, I don't, I don't think I'd want to negotiate a loan with this guy. So I went off to the next dealership, and they didn't have anything I was willing to consider. So that, that was very quick. But again, we had a salesman who got me to where I was trying to get fairly quickly. He showed me a couple of the more expensive cars, because he's like, these are the good, reliable ones. And I'm like, well, but they're expensive. And so then he showed me the ones that were closer to the price, I was saying. But none of them were great. All of them had over 100,000 miles. And I was like, thank you very much for showing me very quickly everything that I might have been interested in. But it doesn't seem you have the car for me today. So... I went back and I actually test drove the Versa. The other guy had been very assertive and so that was part of why I liked him and he got me into a test drive fairly quickly, although it didn't take much. All you have to do is ask. The other guy was really low pressure, very laid back. His name was Dennis Lunsford again and so he was kind of like, this is exactly what you're looking for and so he didn't seem terribly surprised when I came back and said you know I'd really like to take that car for a test drive and my biggest problem with the Ford that I'd been put in to test drive was lack of visibility off and back into my right so when I turn around I can't see and it's just that pillar there I didn't like it on the Versa, it's not there. I'm used to driving a station wagon, which is basically windows on wheels. I didn't appreciate that fully until I drove something else. But the Versa is very much very visible. I'm able to see everything. And it also runs pretty well. I got back in my old car. Oh, that's a bit of a trip. After I got the new car, I was trying to figure out what to do with the old car. The old car, of course, has new tires and a couple of other things on it that are sort of worth having, like the radio and I think I'm out of stuff. There was nothing that really worked, and I hadn't come up with anything final when I remembered my mother had been asking me if I would sell her my car, and I'm kind of like, well, it's not really worth having at this point, but we'll see what happens. So I called her up and I'm like, hey, my car is completely broken down. Do you want it? And she was like, are you serious? How much are you selling it to me for? And I'm like, no, just fix it. So it turned out that she wanted it, even though it was kind of a mess right now. So I guess there's 
somebody in this world who's worse off than me. So we ended up getting that fixed. I ended up having to be the one to finance it. But we got the repairs fixed and she and I made an agreement. I really hope that we're able to do everything according to plan and my younger brother doesn't decide he needs us to mail him Dr. Pepper in China again. But other than that, I don't see anything going terribly wrong. I'm really frustrated with my mother and I'm really mad at her, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, the car does me nearly no good. There's nothing else I can realistically do with it. And so I'm really hard pressed to come up with reasons not to give it away outside of just pure spite. Although the risk of taking out a loan was very, very concerning to me. But, so now I have my new car. I also have my old car that I'm sort of giving away. Though, we're not transferring ownership just yet. And, yeah, life is just kind of going. I've replaced the two most important machines in my life, my computer and my car. And so now, I just need to work some overtime to make all of this debt go away, as if I didn't have enough already. But I'm still happier having them than not, and the computer at the very least I can pay off this month, or I should be able to.